Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Dark Souls 3, the first impressions. Yes, the network test is out and I have some initial impressions from my first hour and a half's worth of play of uh, the network test of this, well, basically what's turning out to be a fantastic game. It's going to be really, really fucking good. Um, my initial thoughts, before I get into any kind of specific details, are that it kind of fits like an old glove. It feels like Dark Souls. If Bloodborne was new and it was different and it was fast, and Dark Souls 2 was a bit slow and a bit spongy, um, Dark Souls 3, it just it feels like what Dark Souls should be. It is like the next-gen Dark Souls. You have this comforting moving system. It's a little bit faster than Dark Souls. Like, faster than the original game. But it works. You know, there, there's no issues with it feeling slow and clunky like Dark Souls 2 did. It, to, well, to me anyway. I know a lot of people do like Dark Souls 2. And I like Dark Souls 2. But it felt so much of a slower game. Whereas this one you can see in the background here. It's got a little bit of Bloodborne speed to it. But it is Dark Souls. So I'm going to get into some specifics now. Okay, just a few things. Um, stuff that I've found because I've played, all, I've played for a little while. But we're going to start with the classes. So there are four classes available in the network test. The first one is the Wandering Knight. He has a standard knight set, a long sword, a kite shield, and a target shield for parrying. Um, it is important to note that you can't parry with every shield you have to have, but it seems at the minute you have to have a target shield for it. Next up is the White Herald, who is your standard mage class. Um, he carries uh, a mace, the guard guardian shield for parrying, and a talisman for casting spells. Uh, spells he has lightning, spear, sacred, oath, and heal. A uh, good thing about heal is if you're in co-op, which I am here, I do believe if you're close enough, he, uh, you can heal up your host as well, which is nice. It has this kind of little bit of area of effect on it, so it can kind of save an Estus if you use it properly. Uh, you can see here a little bit of the PvP action. There you go, there's the lightning spear. Good old lightning spear, it's back. The Sun Bros will be happy. Next up we have the Academy Assassin. Uh, on the wiki it's actually called the, the Executioner, but Namco seems to have changed their mind on what he's called. This guy is your standard sorcerer, so he carries a catalyst. Um, he also has a spear and a buckler for parrying. Uh, and the kind of the spells he has like soul, uh, soul arrow, soul dart, and soul greatsword. You can see the greatsword here, yeah, look at that, it's fantastic. It's actually really good for crowd control. And last up, we have the Northern Warrior. Now this is your, uh, he has a battle axe, a round shield for um, if you can launch the battle skills, which is the, uh, kind of like a, a beast roar, and a small shield for parrying. All the characters had a torch as well. But let's talk about the world. So the, g the game puts you in the high wall of Lothric, which it bears an uncanny resemblance to uh, Undeadburg. It also has a little bit of Yarnum about it. Basically it looks like an old castle, uh, or fortress if you look up here you can see that that's gonna have a boss in it there so I took some time I slowed this down so you can have a look and you can see everything around here down there where you see the kind of cathedral looking thing that's where we'll fight the boss in a bit and you can just see how expansive this is and hopefully it's going to stick with Miyazaki's standard uh, ethos of if you can see it you can go there but the world is nicely populated, so you're generally walking along battlements. Um, there are these turrets that you can walk into and go up and down in. Obviously, you can see standard things where it keeps the secrets alive. Uh, up here, you get... Yeah, you get it. You get the big dragon. So you walk up, you've got this huge mob here, run down, and dragon lands. Just like in Underberg, it burns everything up beautifully. And gets you some easy souls. <laughs> And yes, there are souls this time, they're not Blood Echoes, which is a wonderful thing to have. Uh, because obviously every time I play Bloodborne, I get confused and I call them souls. Uh, and again, here you see you have the second mob and the dragon will breathe down here and destroy them all quite nicely. And just like in Underberg, if you time it right, you can just run straight through and get up onto here. Now from here, we get another fight, then we end up on the rooftops, where you get this monstrous atrocity appears. Um, this is a one-off enemy, so if you di if you die after killing him, he doesn't respawn. But he is it's amazing how much can come from one standard hobble. <laughs> it's quite ridiculous. And he's actually quite hard when you're fighting him on your own. I was fighting him in co-op, yeah. Um, so from the rooftops, we come back down. And we come back down to ground level after killing a few more things. And we end up coming against one of the larger enemies after I destroy a suit of armor here. 
you'll see him just through this door. I don't know why I threw a Molotov there. Oh yeah, I was going for Nesta's flask and I hit the wrong thing. Uh, as we walk through here, you'll see the big guy. Now he fights a little bit like Smo actually. He's got a similar moveset to Smo, despite the fact he's not using a massive hammer. Uh, he also moves a lot like the executioners in Bloodborne. Um, he's quite dangerous, but he's kind of easy to negotiate, and you can get a backstab on him like that. Look at that great sword backstab. Uh, there's a few weapons hidden around the game area, so there is the great sword as, as you've just seen there. Um, there's uh, kind of two-handed blades for a dex attack, which are really cool. Um, I think I think there's another one, but I can't remember what it is. Um, okay, so then once you've dealt with the big guy, you come down here to this kind of royal gardens looking thing as we head towards the cathedral. And you get these kind of royal guards. Large tower shields. Basically, they're quite similar to anything you might have fought in Dark Souls before. They're not a real stretch on the imagination as to what you can fight. But then the last thing I want to show you in this video, and I'm going to be doing a couple of videos with the footage again, but I just... I wanted to get something out here just to show you what's kind of going on here. Um, we're going to go talk about the boss. And the boss is fantastic. So we come up with a standard from soft push the doors open kind of moment. Just to build that tension. And you get this uh, cathedral. Which looks like a cross between where you fight Ornstein Smo and uh, anything that you might find in Bloodborne. <laughs> We come up here to a statue that looks surprisingly like um, uh, Oscar of Astora. And here we have the Dancer of the Frigid Valley. And this boss fight is just amazing. The moveset on this boss is so beautiful and so slow and so graceful. And look at that attack! Now if I hadn't been in M... If I hadn't had my Ember restored, which is kind of like using humanity to come back to life, that probably would have one-shotted me. <laughs> that is a hell of an attack, but if you see... There's, it's the little details I like. So, you see us, her sword is on fire. Look at where she strikes the ground. You can see it leaves the sweet marks, but then look, the carpet is on fire. Where, But it's in relation to where she moves, not the whole thing. So, by the end of the fight, the whole thing would be on fire, because she'll have moved up and down the whole arena, but it's... As she moves around, it gradually catches fire further and further. Um, even though details like that ethereal cloak that she's wearing, it's fantastic. But she moves so fluidly, and it, it's kind of unlike anything that you've fought in any any of the Souls games. There isn't a boss that ca this one compares to. Because um, most bosses in Dark Souls kind of relied on either having thousands of arms <laughs> and like area of, act area of effect attacks or being a big guy in armor. This boss is kind of both in one. Um, but the setting is fantastic, the music is fantastic. And obviously I'm, I'm playing other music in the background here. When I, at the end of this commentary, once I've basically once I die at this, to this boss, I'll end it, but then I'll show you a full victory match, me with two of the phantoms taking her down. And I'll just let that run because it is fantastic to watch. It's utterly captivating how the fight goes. Um, when you get her down to a certain set of health as well, she does this move, she stabs into the ground, here it is, and draws a second sword out. And then the moveset gets even harder to predict because she can attack from both sides, she gains all these new spins in that. And there are a couple of times, I don't know if it's in this one or if it's in the next one, but where you see her kind of wind up with one sword, then attack with the other, there you go, that, I think that was it there. And it just means you have to be so careful and so attentive to what the boss is. I was probably doing it entirely wrong here by locking on, which is why I died. But, so my initial thoughts on Dark Souls 3 is, like I said, it's like putting on an old glove. It feels like Dark Souls. It is just wonderful. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's a network test. It's still in development, so there were some kind of niggly issues. There's a bit of lag, a few frame rate drops and all that, but otherwise I could... Other than that, I couldn't complain anything about it. It's shaping up to be such a good game. And it's, what, still six months away. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it here. If you enjoyed this, please do leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you played it? What do you think of it? Uh, I am going to also have some more co content coming up soon. Um, and obviously there's two more days of the, beta of the uh, network test left, so I'm going to try and get a bit more gameplay as I go. 
Um, but for now, I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to let you watch the full um, boss fight and you can just appreciate it in all its glory. For now, though, thank you for watching and good night.